Here we are at the end of May, it's Memorial Day weekend, and even though we saw a few flurries um, just a couple of days ago, that's hard for me to believe, uh, I'm starting to feel the pressure to get this uh, timber frame boathouse done. So today we're going to pick up on, on the wall plates, um, we're going to cut the joints for the posts, and we're going to cut the uh, corner braces. And since our last video, I have learned a whole bunch about corner braces. I have another timber project going on that has a whole lot of braces and I feel like I have a better way to explain them now so we're going to talk about that too when we start cutting the joints for these wall plates. But let's take a look at the, at the plans and we will go from there. These here are the wall plates that we're going to cut and let's look at the joints and figure out how they work. Uh, these tenons on the top of the posts are centered so we just have uh, a mortise that is a little bit deeper, I think that's probably just over four inches, and it's just centered on this beam. If this beam, or if this wall plate happens to be too wide, we're going to reference off of the outside of this post, because if you think about it, when we put siding on, we need the, f the outside surface to be flat. So I'm gonna take and make sure that this surface is flush with this surface. And when it comes to uh, the corner braces. This is the biggest thing that I've learned since the last video. We have this housing right here and it's measured down a half of an inch, but that's really not the important measurement. The important measurement is to come from the top of the beam down to five and a half inches. And what that does is it allows for any variation in the beam thickness to be absorbed by this housing. So if the beam is perfectly six inches, then we'll have a five and a half here and a half inch here. But if the beam is over or under, this housing may uh, increase or decrease in height. First thing we're gonna do is cut these to the 10 foot length. I'm gonna not cut the corners off yet. That's more of a decorative element. I'm gonna leave that there so that I can pull my measurements for, uh, for the mortises. posts are set in a foot from the end and it's a six inch uh, tenon so we're coming from 12 inches out to 18 inches and then we're going to use this side here as our reference face so we're going to come in two and a quarter and three and three quarters two and a quarter three and three quarters and then we'll carry these lines across Uh, in order to prevent um, the chain mortising machine from uh, tearing out the edges here, I like to just use the chisel and just kind of break the fibers here and here. Sitting right on the pencil line and giving it a good whack. Last, on the last video, when we put the corner braces on the back wall, I had such a hard time explaining where we were referencing off of, what the housing was supposed to be, and after practicing a little bit, I think I have a better way to explain it. So 
the housing is what allows us to fix where 90 degrees is from the post to the plate. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a measurement right off the center here and our plans say we're going to go 23 and an eighth this way, 23 and an eighth this way. And the important part is that that 23 and an eighth where we stop there, we're going to take a measurement down from the top and we're going to mark that at five and a half. And then over here, we're going to come in from the outside, come in five and a half. So our housings are not going to necessarily be a half inch uh, deep. Like on this one, this, this beam is five and three quarters at this post. So we're only going to have a quarter inch housing here. This one is, yep, same thing, five and three quarters. So we're only going to have a quarter inch here. And by measuring on the outside like this and using the center as our reference point, that's going to give us um, a good 90 degrees between these two. We have our mark from the inside of this post to 23 and an eighth inch here. And we've laid out um, three inches inside and then an inch and a half. And we're gonna go through and do all of the mortises first. And then we will come back and uh, set the depth of the housing. What's really important here is that we don't let this outside 23 and an eighth inch move. That needs to stay right at that spot if we get uh, too, if we go too far, then the post is going to come in too far. If we don't go far enough, the post will be pushed out. So we're going to pay very close attention to that. I'm not going to set this line here because this distance is determined by the, the width of the corner brace. So I will set um, the 23 and an eighth and then we're going to lay the corner brace in and get a nice 45 degree angle instead of having just this kind of awkward um, 90 degree angle. didn't run uh, the chain mortiser all the way up to the line here. Um, I left a little bit between the chain mortiser and where I set my chisel mark um, because the chain mortiser can kind of make a mess of the edges. So what I'll do is come back uh, with the chisel then and, and make sure this, this is vertical or perpendicular to uh, the surface. The process for uh, creating the housing looks like setting the edge with the chisel and then I'm going to cut down in and then I'll switch over to the jigsaw and turn it over and cut out the mass of this or the, the majority of this material here. So let's start with this part. I make sure I don't go past, uh, past my depth. So we'll just take a little bit there. Just trying to make room for the jigsaw blade. Turn it up on edge and run the jigsaw across. I keep saying this, but in order to determine the depth of the housing, we take a measurement off the top and we're going to sit right at five and a half inches. See how this one is only five and three quarters? So this, this housing is going to be a little bit smaller than the other ones. But we'll just use the jigsaw to take out the majority of the waste.
not going to go all the way. Uh, I'm going to leave some here and then depending on the, the width of my brace, I'm going to lay that in here. That'll determine where I make this 45 degree cut. I still am going to clean this part up with the chisel, but I've set the vertical edge here and I'm just going to push this in to see about how much we have to take off. So we're going to line up somewhere in that neighborhood there. And I've also used the chisel to knock off um, a 45 degree angle right here so that this portion of the brace can slide in just like that. With this all cleaned up in our 45, this is how a corner brace should fit. Apparently I made some modifications to the plan after I made these and I went to uh, fit them in here and the, the mortises and tenons fit but the overall brace is an inch too short. So I'll have to head back to the sawmill later on and, and make a few more of these but we have the braces or the corner pockets cut and we have the mortises cut for the posts. So after I get these um, corner braces rebuilt, uh, this should be ready to uh, assemble. Uh, next up, I think we're going to cut the posts to length, and then we have some girts. Girts are the pieces that go between uh, the posts to kind of keep things stable, and you can also use them for shelves and um, on the inside of the building. So we'll, we'll hit that next, but until then, take care. See you later.